I'm Mano Marx. I'm a Google Maps API developer advocate, and I'm here with Paul Rademacher. And Paul's going to be talking about his um, his latest project, which is uh, Stratocam. But first, uh, I think we're going to take a a couple minutes just to introduce Paul, because Paul is uh, fairly significant in the history of the Google Maps API. Uh, he uh, introduced the he actually discovered the Google Maps API and produced uh, what is widely regarded as the first Google Maps mashup, which is uh, housingmaps.com. So Paul, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? OK. Um, so um, uh, oh, and a little bit extra about me. So I actually used to work at Google um, for several years. So I was, I was here for five years on the Earth team and Maps um, and left recently to go do a new startup. Uh, before I joined Google, I was working at DreamWorks Animation, and um, in 2005, Google Maps had uh, had just come out. There was no API. Um, it was it was awesome, you know, working in 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 graphics. Um, we dealt with large, panable images all the time, you know, pan and, and zoomable images. Um, and but I, I still so I literally remember the day that Google Maps came out, and we were all. You know, hunched over the screen, thinking, "How how did nobody ever think of this?" Um, at the time, though, Google Maps was uh, was fairly static. This is you know just in the first couple of weeks, um, and I started thinking about what other kind of data might make sense on a map, um, and what if it were um, you know what's what's a very fast moving data type that that might be interesting. Uh, I was looking for a place to live, um, so I happened to be spending a lot of time on Craigslist. Um, and um, and I didn't really know JavaScript. I didn't really know what Maps was doing, but I knew enough. I knew that the Maps code was you know executing on the browser. Um, and so what I did was I grabbed the .js files. I I I basically scraped the whole Google Maps site, images, not tile, everything except for tiles, put them on my server, and then started poking at the files uh, one by one um, to see what it did. And it was all obfuscated. Right, so there were no symbols, so you know, really couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, but I started off by looking at strings in in JavaScript, so I could see, right, that's a, a really good place for you know reverse engineering. Is like, okay, so I, I definitely know this thing, you know, this is, this string is not obfuscated. There's a few function calls that you know system calls are not obfuscated. Um, so starting with that, little by little, um, I, I poked at it until I could get, um, uh, I could, until I could set the position of the map to what I wanted. I poked at it until I could get markers um, and then uh, info windows to pop up. And uh, a few weeks later, I had uh, a website. Um, uh, oh, I was also simultaneously scraping housing listings from, from Craigslist. Um, so about six weeks of work uh, later, I, um, I had this, this, this demo uh, put together. Um, and I posted on the Craigslist housing forum, like on a Thursday night. And I said, hey, guys, I have this new thing I'm working on, um, can anybody test it? And in fact, I actually posted on a, on a Wednesday first with that message, and then uh, people uh, cussed me out, called, called me a spammer, because I didn't put the URL. Um, so they thought I was selling something. So I reposted it the next day with the URL. Uh, that was Thursday night. I wake up Friday, and um, somebody, some blogger noticed it. Uh, so basically, I roll into work on Friday, and somebody asked me, uh, they said, hey, Paul, do you know that there's the guy with your name that just did a cool map thing online, um, and and uh, and it was immediate insanity. I, I had uh, Gmail had just I guess Gmail had been out for about a year, but my Gmail account had like a hundred messages in it, you know, up to that day. And then by the end of the day, it was like a couple of thousand, um, and uh, and it was just crazy. Uh, that was so. This wound up being the very first Google Maps uh, mashup, the very first third-party website. There was no API. Um, API was released a couple months later, um, but I mean, it, you know, people immediately started hacking on it even before an API. And now, you know, hundreds of thousands of API sites later, here we are. And we hadn't actually intended at Google. We hadn't intended to release an API. We, it, it wasn't even really just something we thought about. We we're thinking, hey, this is a cool thing. People can come to our site. They can get driving directions, whatever. And then that. Um, Paul and and then later a few other people just showed us the tremendous uh, the tremendous um, good that we could do the for the web 
by providing this really easy way to put maps on the site. Um, we, I was actually at a, um, uh, at a conference, WordCamp SoCal, uh, a couple years ago, and I said, you know, we, we were presented with an option. We could either hire Paul or sue him. And, and somebody from another large geographic information company said, or you could have killed him. So we didn't. Wait, we really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that was an option. <laughs> well, that, if you work at this other large geographic um, information company, which shall remain nameless, huh. um, apparently that's an option. Wow. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so we we chose instead to to hire Paul and you know set out to build the Google Maps API, we're, and we're really excited. We're on I think um, seven hundred thousand websites now. So. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing for such a, a short period of time. It's a nice number. Yeah, it is the most uh, used app API on the web. Mm -hmm. So we're really happy and lucky to have Paul uh, with us. Uh, Paul was the uh, the lead uh, for the Google Earth API as well. He helped, he built that and helped uh, led the team that uh, that built and published that. So if you're interested in putting Google Earth on your website, so, um, we have a way to do that. Um, but now, I think you probably want to talk about what you're doing right now. Sure. Um, so, um, as a uh, maps uh, geek, uh, uh, I spend uh, uh, so I spend a lot of time. Obviously, um, uh, you know, as as part of my work, especially was when I was on the Earth team, spent a lot of time looking at satellite imagery. Um, uh, Google Earth has uh, a full screen mode, which you guys are probably all familiar with. Um, the word we use for in talking about full screen mode is is immersive, right? So that's one of the things when you uh, one of the great things about Earth is is it takes away every you know the entire UI of of, um, of the operating system of you know there's no browser uh, you know window decorations or anything. It's it's just the satellite view. Um, uh, very. I think really few people experience satellite imagery, you know, with that level of immersion. The majority of people um, who run into um, into Google Map on a day-to-day -day basis, um, it's because they're trying to get something else done, right? So searching for a location, um, getting driving directions, right, between two points, um, and Map View suffices for most of those use cases. Um, Satellite view is is still great for the average person when they want to look up their own house, right? Um, and that's that's always that's always neat, uh, or maybe just to see pictures of some other country, you know, something on the news or whatever. Um, but uh, but still, in the context of maps like Google.com, uh, satellite imagery is 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 part of the show, but it's not it's not 100% the star, right? You're there to get work done. So one of the things that I, I enjoy doing is um, is uh, is discovering usually just randomly just finding places on on, on the map that look amazing, mm -hmm. either because it's some man-made structure that looks really cool or it's um, you know just some neat pattern on the ground or some you know, some colors or whatever, and and what I've done a few times is I'll find something on 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 maps maps like Google, grab the link and then share it you know on my preferred social network, mm -hmm. right. Uh, just just send it to people. Like here's a cool mansion in the middle of this suburb that you had no idea existed, right? And that that's that's great. Um, but after a few of these, I realized, you know, there's actually a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff on the planet to see, right? And there's more than just one person can collect. Why don't we uh, Why don't we take a look at Stratagem? Okay. So and are we full screen? This. Uh, Uh, command shift F. Okay, okay so um, let's see. Uh, Josh, actually, can we see the people again? I want to confirm that everybody can see this. Okay, so can you guys out there see this? Yeah, okay, awesome. Okay, so as I said before, the typical thing that people do on Google Maps and on Google Earth, is the first thing um, a lot of people do is type in their, their street address, their, their home address. They want to see what their house looks like. Right, so this is somebody else's house. This is these are houses in Dubai. If you happen to live in Dubai and you happen to have a little bit of cash, um, 
then when you look up your house, you'll find this. And you, you might be impressed, but this is probably old news to you, right? For most of the world, this is amazing. Uh, so I think this is more than the top 1%. Yes. Is top 0.1%. Yes. Yeah. They should pay their fair share. No. Um, so, so, uh, so this is somebody's house. Um, um, and uh, yeah, this is somebody else's version of my house. Uh, Josh, can we go to the next one? Okay, so this is an airport. This is uh, LaGuardia or JFK, one of the two, I forget. Um, so we have all seen airports on Google Maps because we're trying to get there, right? So you type in the, the airport as your destination. But how often do you, do you switch to satellite view and, and pull back a little bit and just take a look at what the airport look like, looks like? So this, this is actually one of my favorite pictures that I've, that I've found. It's, oh, it's really nice, yeah. Love it. And so, w and so it looks like you've got a, a voting mechanism on Stratocam too. So, right. Um, so, uh, oh, and before I talk about the voting, so so a couple of these is images on Stratocam, more than a couple. Um, as I was working on it, I I collected, I tried to collect um, um, a lot of good stuff for people to see, um, um, you know, on day one of launch. And I had collected about 200 images, uh, which I thought were were pretty good. And I had some of the greatest hits right ahead. Uh, yeah, Josh, you can just feel free to fast forward. Um, so I had a lot of the greatest hits, right, like Eiffel Tower, um, the Pentagon, uh, places like that. Um, I'd grabbed about 200 at launch, and I worried, what if I already found all the best stuff, right? Um, so one of the things you can do on Stratocam is anybody can move the map around. Um, uh, and in fact, right now, Josh, you could grab it and and just pan, right, so this is a Google Maps API site, it's built entirely on top of Maps API. Um, so at any point, uh, while you're viewing the slideshow of the images, um, uh, you can move the map around and, uh, and eventually you'll see a little camera icon at, at the bottom that will let you take a snapshot and show it to other people. Um, uh, when I launched, I had 200 images and then um, right now the total is around, it's close to 30,000. So 30,000 images submitted by, uh, uh, by users. And at the bottom, there's a thumbs up and thumbs down buttons so people can also vote for the best. Um, and what we're seeing here is a selection of, of some of the best images that people selected. I, uh, I told Paul he should call it the hot or not for satellite imagery. I'm not sure if, uh, if he, he's allowed to do that. I like it. I think I'm allowed. <laughs> yeah, OK. Let's call it that. That's your elevator pitch. It is done. This is amazing. Do you, do this you is, I, I, OK, so I, I haven't been able to find out exactly what this is. This is right um, northeast of London, um, some sort of island. Yeah, it's, it, one of the interesting things that happens here is, is people choose to discover things on the ground that just um, look interesting, <laughs> aesthetically pleasing. Um, but then this is a great entry point to learning about, you know, about geography or, or, or what's on the ground. Well, how far back did it go? Uh, where is this? Uh, this is San Diego. Um, this is actually not s a satellite image. This is um, uh, this is from the f this is 45 degree imagery. Yes, the, right. The, right. The, we, this is aerial imagery with four or 45 degree imagery. What we used to call obliques. Obliques, right? Yeah. And Maps API is really great in that I can set. In fact, I set the map to 45 degrees always, mm -hmm. and, and then it automatically toggles to 45 degrees if it's available. And it's usually, usually when it's available, it's higher quality, yeah. sharper, um, and, and lower to the ground. Um, and go ahead, Josh. In fact, hit P, and we'll just go automatically. And Josh, I think somebody's not muted on there. This is an FI. Okay, so this, this image here, uh, it says it's in the Baja uh, California region of Mexico. Um, this is, um, you know, clearly a natural feature. Uh, what you can't see is that this is, um, it's, let's see, it's, it's over a mile across. This is actually huge, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, uh, you know, you find all around the planet these fractal shapes, right? Right. Um, and you know what more can we say? It's it's beautiful. 
Yeah. This is a great one. This is the now um, non-functioning um, airport in, in Berlin. Um, check out the tarmac. It's, it's enormous. Amazing. And Josh, yeah. hit minus to back out a little bit. And we can see a little more of it. Um, again, uh, as an entry point to learning about um, geography or history, in this case, if you look up this airport on Wikipedia, you'll learn that this was um, uh, this was uh, the essentially command center for the Berlin airlift. Oh. Mm -hmm. Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Um, there are a lot of circles on the ground. So if people these submitted are, these are uh, if if I recognize them from if this were in a U.S. context I would definitely recognize these as uh, as agricultural circles right they, yeah that's they irrigation devices that go in the circular pattern around the central pump mm -hmm. yeah yeah just blowing my vast agricultural knowledge there. excellent <laughs> excellent uh, what is this this is a picture of water actually let's fast forward to the next one. That's amazing. I think, you know, as, as commuters, we don't think about the beauty of highways. Mm -hmm. but if you, I think designers of highways really thought about this. As they, were. they definitely thought about it. Yeah, right, exactly. Exactly. The designer, for all these man-made structures, there's some architect um, who saw that and marveled at it and said, I've, I've created something beautiful, right. right, but you can only enjoy it from high up. Um, Josh, let's go on. Oh, okay, I, th I think these are different. Um, Crop, yeah, crop circles, uh, uh, but but still in Saudi Arabia, and and I love the fact that uh, that's all desert except for you know, these yeah. green fields. Um, circles, more circles. This is Sweden, uh, and go to the next one. I think the next one is in fact, and here we are in Rome. Now, you used the uh, Maps API to do this, obviously. I, I noticed as we were zooming out that I didn't see any. Uh, are you just using satellite mode or, yeah, just, a, just satellite mode? So that there's was no roads or anything. Back, back up one. This is, uh, this is the parking lot outside Epcot Center. So there you go, Disney, yeah. Disney World. Yeah. Um, a curvy, uh, this, is, uh, this is outside an Air Force base in Southern California. Um, I don't know why the roads are curved like that. Um, it almost looks like a racetrack. It looks it looks like a racetrack. Um, I don't think it is. No. Um, Ice flows. I, that's what, what I would guess. Yeah, this is this yeah. This is, in, this is yeah. Antarctica. Antarctica. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Serbia. Um, one of the interesting things. Um, oh, you, you can keep going, Josh. Thanks. Um, so one of the um, one of the great things about this site, okay, lesson learned for Maps API developers. When possible, um, um, uh, this, oh, <laughs> this is a great one. Um, I'll, I'll make my point after we look at this one. Okay. So this is in, uh, this is Canada. Um, this one is a fan favorite. This is one of the most upvoted uh, pictures. Um, 2581 upvotes. Yeah, yeah, yeah 2500 yeah. upvotes. And you see the face? Of course, yeah. Right? Um, and uh, yeah, so take, so basically what this is, is if you look at the, if you could scan the millions and millions of, of hillsides and just, you know, random uh, geological erosion patterns, right, and mm -hmm. uplift and everything else, eventually one of them will resemble a face. Right. right, and that's and that's what this is. Um, now the weird thing is that he's wearing um, iPod uh, headphones, <laughs> so I don't I don't know what's going on there. I think Apple Pay for something. Right? That's right. That's right. It's an ad. <laughs> Steve Jobs, um, Berlin. It's a beautiful building. Um, oh, what I was going to say before is this site doesn't have really any text except for the location at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so it winds up being very very uh, internationalized. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, this one is taken, by the way, by our own Michael Jones oh, okay. um, of the original Google Earth team. Um, 
So this is a very you know internationalized uh, site. Uh, so one of the neat things that I get to witness here is if a link to Stratocam appears in let's say a Russian newspaper, which has happened uh, several times, um, uh, because the site is all user contributed content, then for that time period while it's hot in Russia, mm -hmm. all the images on the front page will st will start becoming images of Russia, oh, right. and people right. will vote their own, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I can actually see this app changes constantly on the 24-hour cycle as it goes right, as it, as it goes around, yeah. and it also ensures it also makes it you know an interesting side effect is then the other viewers from Russia are mm -hmm. seeing things that hit home, right? right? right. Uh, this is the Forbidden City in uh, Beijing. Right. Um, and these are baths. Oh, so we saw that little shift there. It actually shifts from satellite imagery right into the the um, aerial imagery. The that's imagery. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's maps that are transitioning. Um, and this is Algeria, nothing but great colors. Yeah. Um, more circles. I think this is a. There's a few of these that are really interesting. This is a man-made circle. Um, uh, Again, this is actually, is that a, sp I think that's a spiral. Oh, yeah. There's a yeah. spiral pattern. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Mm. Well, that's amazing. Suez Canal. Suez Canal. Yeah. Boat captured. Um, the uh, land mass of the Earth is 150 uh, 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 kilometers squared. Um, so gives you a sense of how much ground there is to cover. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this is actually one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, the favorites because it's so it's so beautiful and also bizarre. Uh, so this is in in uh, in the Congo. Um, this is this is uh, vegetation on the outskirts on the edges of a lake of a large lake in the Congo, um, and you'll see those little squiggly patterns, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Little tiny spirals. Um, they're actually huge. Each one of those is about two to three hundred feet across. Wow! Right, um, and the spirals just end abruptly. So um, I I spent half an hour on Wikipedia and online and, and trying and looking up the name of the lake and uh, and we couldn't figure out what what's, what's going on here. So this one's a total mystery. Um, I I kind of think it's it's man-made channels by which to. Uh, uh, you know, maneuver boats. Right. Um, but why spirals and why do they end abruptly? I don't know. Uh, this is, I think this this is an island out between Alaska and Russia. Right. Uh, this is in the Bahamas, just beautiful blue. Pirate ship. Mm -hmm. nice. uh, Hanover Gardens in Germany. Uh, this one's another fan favorite. People. Love this image. Yeah, it's 2,300 upvotes. So um, I'm thinking it might be good to start taking some questions from uh, from the hangout. So let's see. Uh, if you've got a question for Paul, why don't you uh, raise your hand and we will unmute you. We'll bring you back in. Anybody? Yes, Eric. Am I unmuted? No, you're fine. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, one of the things that I love about um, Google Maps and Google Earth is, uh, and just kind of playing with them like a video game, you can uh, assimilate so much information and understanding about what's going on with the geography. Um, and uh, I do that with Stratocam as well. Uh, so I like to flip through uh, really quick and understand different places in the world. And uh, I would love it if I could filter out the the points that don't have uh, the uh, the place labeled. Um, so what I end up doing a lot of times is uh, I um, will zoom out and try to figure out where that place is, and then try to pull it up up in Google Maps, and then find it in Google Earth, and then explore around that place if it's interesting. Um, and and further to that point, um, as this gains popularity. Um, it seems like it would be wonderful to be able to categorize different places like uh, you could cruise through all the agriculture, sp interesting agriculture spots or the cities or villages and you could 
really quickly start to educate yourself about structures of culture and ag agriculture and, and everything else like that. So I was curious about your, your uh, future development plans along those lines. Um, yeah, so those are, those are two great points. Um, categories, some, some form of categorization is actually right at the top of my to-do list. Mm -hmm. um, categorization both um, thematically, as you said, you know, interesting agricultural items. Um, as, as I mentioned before, there there's tons of circles on on the ground. And I want a circles collection. I actually want to just go through and look at all the circles that people have discovered. Right. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. also even by geography. Um, the two, I would say, I would say the three most interesting places um, or or sources of snapshots are Russia, Northeast Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and and, uh, and the Netherlands. Surprisingly, the Netherlands has just beautiful um, castles and, and 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 forts and 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 water channels, go, you know, plowing through fields. Yeah. Um, so I, I would like to see those as collections, right? Just show me stuff in the Netherlands. Um, so that's that's at the top of the list, and I think it'll be great. Awesome. Um, it, the other the other point, um, some some uh, items, some snapshots surprisingly don't. Um, don't have location. What I do is the user submits a snapshot and that winds up just being latitude and longitude and, and the view extents. Um, mm -hmm. And then on the back end, I send it to the Google Geocoder and I try to parse. Right? You get a big oh, okay. dump of data and try to parse the interesting uh, stuff. I, I do need to run a second geocoding pass to pick up um, some stuff that didn't geocode the first time that I think I could do better at um, on, a second, on a second run. Um, there is a secret uh, feature. If you if you hit uh, if you hit A, the letter A, it will actually pop up um, labels in Stratocam. Um, oh, cool. So is that switching to the hybrid map side? It switches to hybrid map, right? Exactly. Awesome. Nice. Oh, that's um, awesome. And so that's useful. It's useful for that. Um, the constant thing I run into in in the app is uh, is I try to keep it the UI super super minimal. Um, yeah. Because you know most, you know, 99% of people don't need to see labels, but for that 1% that really do want to see them, I want to support that. So I'm going to make the the labels feature more prominent. Cool. And then and then one one other quick question, I can give someone else a chance. Um, as I cruise through all of these spots, what I end up doing when I thumb thumb up something or a a, a, a place is compelling to me, I end up uh, going into Google Earth, looking up that location, finding the lot long, and then plugging it in. Um, I end up going into Google Maps. And then and then one one other quick question I can give someone else a chance. Um, as I cruise through all of these spots, what I end up doing when I thumb thumb up feedback. something or uh, I'm more uh, on here. Okay, go go ahead. I think we'll do okay. Okay, cool. Um, uh, but anyway, to simplify that whole thing, um, I would love to be able to download a KML of all of the points that I've thumbed up and then be able to plug that into Google Earth and 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 explore those places and get it back and do the work. I I heard your question. Cool. We're fixing the echo. Um, it was a good question. Okay, I think we got the echo under control here. Um, I, I did see uh, recently um, a guy, Daniel Dye, D Y E, um, took the Stratocam feed and built a KML file out of it, um, and we chatted a little bit about that. Um, uh, yeah, having maybe like Stratocam, uh, you know, question mark output equals KML or something like that. Um, and uh, like right now, you can go to, go to Stratocam slash API. And you'll see the JSON dump of of the uh, of the snapshots. Um, that's how you know the JavaScript app communicates. So API question mark uh, output equals KML to give the same data format as KML would be super easy. And then I believe you would be able to just go to Earth, Google Earth and just pop in Stratocam, you know, da da da, right. and 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 ingest it directly in Earth. And I could even output it as a tour. I think that's what uh, Dan Dai was doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be fun. Sweet. Be nice. You know, again, I just love love to use it as a tool for exploring and just let, uh, putting the world into my brain. Cool. Thanks. Right. Yep. Cool. Thanks, Eric. Uh, is there somebody else who has a question for Paul? Uh, wave your hand if you do. Here. 
Hi, Paul. Um, kind of on a similar theme. I'd really like to sort of be able to browse the Stratocam by um, the highest rated. So is there a way to browse, you know, to see who's got the most votes, which images have got the most votes? There is another another secret feature. I need I need I need a user guide for this. <laughs> I've got a few things. Um, <laughs> if you go to Stratocam slash top, you you can do that. You okay. can do that today. Um, yeah, I'll do a better job of, of you know putting links up and saying here's all the different uh, views of it. But yeah, slash top right now works, and it'll show you the most uh, the most most uploaded. Oh, something we're hoping. Um, uh, to release uh, myself and my friend uh, Lawrence Kesselu is um, is uh, a a screensaver a Mac screensaver oh, nice. which actually goes to pulls from uh, slash top and uh, it it's a great you know I show this to people and I say this would make an awesome screensaver it right. feels like a screensaver yeah got um, just a couple of technical issues to work out right. like making sure that when you run the screensaver you don't um, Rate limit yourself on, <laughs> on Google on Google Maps. Yeah. So. Right. Cool. Anyone else have a question for Paul? Cool. So how how are we doing on time, Josh? One three five. Okay. So I think what we'll do now is. Uh, We'll shift over to general Maps API questions. So if anybody has any, um, we can ask that, or we can go to the moderator. So if you have any, have a question, or you want to say something, you raise your hand. Um, I can't see if anybody's raising their hand. Sorry, raise your hand if you have any a question. No. Okay. Uh, do you want to pull open the chat? Um, so I see if anybody's written anything in chat. Okay, no. Okay, good. So uh, we're going to go to um, we're going to go to the, uh, the moderator and see what we've got. Okay, so the first question is: Are you still developing Fusion Tables, and will we be able to use this to port to the pop-up info windows? Uh, so yeah, uh, Fusion Tables still a going concern here at Google. It's a it's a beta project. Um, we're still uh, we're still working on it. Uh, it comes out of our Google Research arm. Um, we have an experimental feature that allows you to put that on top of a Google um, Google Maps API. Um, I'm not sure what this means. Is I don't is Jeremy part of the? Um, I don't know if Jeremy's part of the uh, the Hangout. Um, but I don't, so I don't see him there. But um, currently, what you can do is you can actually capture the click event that happens on a Fusion Table layer, and that allows you to um, to get the information that would otherwise be into the info window, and then you can customize the info window yourself. So I hope that answers your question, Jeremy. Okay. So the next one is. KML, what is the best way to keep performance with no clustering and almost 100,000 points? Try to keep the visual distribution of points while keeping the ability to click to get more info. Uh, so 100,000 points is, is a lot of points for a KML file. Um, KML, uh, if, if you're talking about on top of um, Google Maps, I'm, I'm really actually not sure if this is a Maps or um, or Earth question. If you're talking about on top of Google Maps, uh, you, what you probably want to do is actually shift over to using Fusion Tables and the Fusion Table layer uh, for for the moment. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can um, do a network link, which uh, will only open up certain, um, will only load in points uh, when the, when you are to certain zoom level or you're, you're close to it. Um, so you can do what's called a regenerated network link hierarchy. This works particularly well in Google Earth. So as you zoom in, it loads in more points in the, the, re the relevant areas. Um, this would this be a good question for, uh, for Stack Overflow, where we're doing all of our, uh, our tech support for KML now. So 
Uh, let's move on to the next. Will this app appear on Google TV? So I think this is probably a question for, yeah. for Paul. It's a great idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. Just like the screensaver. So. Yeah. And it and it is HTML, so um, it's just a web page, so you can load it onto mm -hmm. Google TV. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to have like some sort of app that did like a screensaver. Mm -hmm. of, yeah, yeah, super fun. Yeah. Can you share any points where balloon mapping imagery has been integrated? What is the submission process? Um, so we have integrated some um, elements. Uh, we we recently got uh, imagery from a, a group called Public Laboratory, um, and we have uh, a lot of the pu their public domain imagery from Public Laboratory is in Google Earth. At this point, I believe what we do is we put it into our historical imagery rather than have it integrate it directly with the um, the top level Im imagery. So um, I I don't know if, uh, if I think we have some in uh, New York City uh, is uh, uh, that I I'm not sure where uh, where that is. But we actually uh, uh, we have some in New Orleans. Um, and uh, I believe we actually did a blog post on this recently that had a KML file you could download. So if you go to the Google at long blog, you can uh, you can check out that um, that site and see. I think there's a KML file that can be uploaded from there. And Google Earth also has kite imagery. Yes. Yeah. We also have uh, we also have kite imagery in a few places as well. So um, yeah, this it's this really interesting thing. Just for those who are wondering, uh, Public Laboratory and, and many others are um, are experimenting with um, basically point-and-click cameras that you just click down the, um, the the button and send it up in the air and it just takes a bunch of imagery over a certain area. And maybe it's flying for an hour, takes a whole bunch and. Um, and you get some you get some really interesting, beautiful, and very close up imagery. So you can get uh, you can get something that is pretty high resolution compared to what you can get uh, from satellite. Um, am I still muted or okay. am I connected with you guys? Uh, your uh, Eric is still you're still in. So. Okay, cool. A little further to that question, can I cut in there or? Yeah. Um, kind of uh, the reason I was interested in the in the balloon. Um, Mapping oh, was you. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Eric. <laughs> uh, um, was uh, on the University of Montana campus. We have uh, old imagery or old satellite images, which um, don't include some of the uh, current built buildings. And one of the criticisms that I was getting from my supervisor was that the Google Maps. Uh, um, API and an approach wasn't good enough because it didn't keep pace with the development of the campus. So that was kind of a little bit of my, I participated in that public laboratory um, uh, Kickstarter and bought a balloon thing with my own money and um, I was going to try to make my own updated satellite images and submit them and then be able, once those were, and the problem with the, the old satellite images is that I couldn't put the footprints in the map maker and update the sidewalk um, uh, uh, lines um, because it was still the old images. So I, I ran up against this continued criticism that, um, um, Google Maps couldn't keep pace, and the the the, uh, the Achilles heel was the old satellite images. Uh, so that's a, that's really good feedback for us, and we do have an imagery submission process. You can actually, um, uh, if you if you search it, you can find uh, you can find you know don't you know um, it's not donating imagery, but giving imagery to Google. For um, for maps, I, you can you can get that, and then we can make it as part of our regular. Okay, and then and then with that note, with that note, then it would be hopefully be pushed into the uh, Google Maps instead of just a historic um, uh, uh, layer in the in the Earth. Yeah, I mean it would depend on the imagery and the quality of the imagery. Right. And I, yeah. I'm not on the imagery team myself. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So so search for that, or you can ping me on Google Plus, and we'll. Um, We'll figure out how to uh, how to get your imagery. Okay, great. 
All right, so I think those are all the questions from the moderator. Are there any more from the Hangout? No? Okay. Any last words, Paul? <laughs> None <laughs> for me. Okay. Um, no, just thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming.